Fractals are complex patterns typically generated by the recursion of a simple pattern. There are two main types of fractals, additive and replacement. An additive fractal is generated by adding a new pattern element to a specific place on the previous structure. A replacement fractal is made by replacing an element of the previous structure with a new pattern, typically made up of similar elements to the one replaced, but in larger numbers. Some fractals are harder to group than others. For example, I'm not sure which category a Mendel-Brot fractal would go, or if it's a different generation method. To illustrate how both types of fractals are made, we will be taking a closer look at two fractals, the cross fractal and the triangle fractal. First, let's talk about the easiest to understand, the cross fractal. In order to make a cross fractal, we start with a single cross shape. Once we have this shape, we can begin making the fractal by adding a cross to each arm of the original shape. Notice that the original shape, the first cross, was not altered by this process. From this point, the next layer of the fractal can be generated by attaching smaller crosses to each arm of the previous layer. To continue the fractal, just keep adding crosses to cross arms. It should be noted at this point that while we have not changed the shape of the original, we have defined the boundary of a new and unique shape, a square. This is a common feature of many additive fractals. Now to examine a replacement fractal, the triangle fractal. These can be a bit harder to understand, but are just as easy to make once you know how. You want to start with a single triangle, then you want to replace it with three small triangles. At this point, it's important to note that you no longer need to draw any part of the original triangle. Just as the triangle you see on the right has its borders defined by the cutouts in the circles, so too is the main triangle's borders defined by the three triangles you just drew. To continue drawing this fractal, just replace three large triangles with nine smaller ones, three each. Remember that it is no longer necessary to draw the replaced triangles, just the replacement triangles. This can be continued indefinitely. On the triangle fractal, we emphasize that the lower layers of the fractal will define the original shape of the fractal. While this is true for many replacement fractals, it is not true for all. A noticeable exception is the coach snowflake fractal. In this fractal, you start with a triangle and replace every straight line with a set of four lines of equal length, with two of the lines forming a point and the other two remaining linear. Repeat for all lines on each layer. Yet you do not preserve the shape of the initial triangle, but rather you generate a new shape, one of a six-pointed star, and then a shape that appears to be hexagonal. Fractals are usually generated using computers. This next section will cover how to program a recursively generating finite fractal. But first, some terms. To start with, the fractal view is a window into the code. Inside there, our fractal will appear, either as we want or how the program will make it. Second, the box on the left will contain pseudocode for generating the fractal. Pseudocode is not in any particular coding language and cannot typically be ran in any program, but it can be hand translated into almost any language. Because this fractal will be generated recursively, the first thing I will do is to find a function so it can be called multiple times. This function requires an X position a y position, a size, and a depth. The size will be half the length of each side, and the depth will be the number of recursions remaining. The first thing we'll want to do is draw a triangle. This code is relying on there being a draw triangle function somewhere else in the program that will take an x, a y, and a size, in that order, and draw an equilateral triangle with the top point at x, y, and the side's length equal to size times two. At this point, it will be helpful to find the other two points on the triangle. To do this, we can cut the triangle in half to form two 30-60-90 triangles. In a 30-60-90 triangle, if the short side is one unit, then the hypotenuse is two units, and the other side is radical three units. We know the short side is one unit because we just cut a line the same length of our hypotenuse in half. So the height of the triangle is radical three units. Now we know the cores of the remaining points. 
One is at x minus size, y minus size times radical 3, and the other is at x plus size, y minus size times radical 3. The problem with the current fractal is it draws the main triangle. Remember, we don't need it, and we don't really want it. But at the same time, we can't remove the drawing line, because we need it for the last level. So we will encase it in an if instead. This if will check to see if we are the last layer. If we are, it draws a triangle. If not, continue the fractal. Our next goal is to draw these three triangles. Fortunately, we already have a method for drawing triangles. Draw a triangle, right? No. Draw a triangle will just draw a triangle. It will limit us to a level 2 fractal. So the best idea is another if? Again, no. You would just end up nesting if statements for the rest of time, and frankly, I'm too lazy for that. No, we have another function that will draw a triangle. Fractal! All we need is three triangles that may be fractals. So, let's just use the function we are making to make that function. This is called recursion. Now that we know what to use, we have to know what to pass it. To do that, we need to know these three points. Fortunately, we already know the top one, x, y. The other two are harder to find. But, since we know this point, and we can see that the points we are trying to find are halfway down the triangle, we just divide size by two. Now that we know this point, we know the other one, because you just changed the sign on x. Now we know the points, it's time to add three new fractals. Just send them the coordinates of the three points, the new size being half the old size, and the numbers of layers remaining, which is one less than it was before this layer. And that is all we need. Now, when this function is called, it will keep drawing smaller and smaller triangles until it reaches the spe depth specified. At this point, it should be noted that the function we wrote for triangle fractals can be extended to draw pyramid fractals instead. You just need to add a z-chord, change draw triangle to draw pyramid, and add two more recursive calls, one for each of the two new base pyramids. And now to program the much simpler cross fractal. Once again, we'll make a recursive function, and the first thing we'll do is make it draw a cross. It should be noted that this draw cross will be called at every level of the fractal. This is the effect we want, as this is an additive fractal rather than a replacement fractal. Draw cross will take an x and a y position and a size. x, y will be the position of the center of the cross, and size will be the length of each of its arms. Since we know the next set of the crosses will go at the ends of the existing arms, we might as well find those chords now. The next step is to make an if statement. If we don't do that, the recursion could go on unchecked. But this time, the condition is depth greater than 1, rather than less than or equal to 1. This is because, this time, the recursion will go in the if rather than in the else. Now it's time to build the recursion. We have the x and y point of each. The new size is again one half the previous size, and the depth is one less than previous. So just fill that in for each of the four points. And you're done building your cross fractal. Now it should be able to handle every level of depth of recursion. And that is how you build a fractal. Most fractals will just be variations of the code you've just written. Enjoy the wonderful world of fractals you've just been exposed to. Be creative and go crazy. If you have any questions, clarifications, or corrections, leave them in the comments below. And leave a like if you want to see more videos like this one. Also, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified about future videos.